How are we doing? Any audio? Hopefully they have something. I think my little microphone was not lifted. Let's try that again. I know we have got signal problems this morning. No idea if it's just me. Hey, David, try that one, buddy. See if we've got anything now. Reconnect the audio is always a good thing. This app is good. Fresh restart. There, we can always restart it again. How are we doing? Someone give me a heads up. I will continue and we'll see how we go. The worst that happens is, working now, buddy. Excellent, good morning to you. How are you doing? Welcome, nice to have you on board. Um, this is Worthing. Let me start all over again then. We'll edit that first bit out. I think the signal's not brilliant around here, so I knew it was gonna be touch and go. I'm down in Worthing on the south coast of the UK, if you don't know it. Um, London is behind me, about an hour and a half on the train journey up to London, you'll be there. Your vocal to your Storrington this morning. Very local to you in Storrington. Ah, good morning, nice to see you. Brilliant, excellent, not far away at all. Well, you know Worthing then. But for all our international followers, this pier is about 150 years old. I believe I've done my research. Um, and I was just going to start off with doing a photograph just down here. Let me just have a little look. Very calm and eerie morning this morning. I was down in, I'm just going to look through the camera. I'm going to miss your comments for a second. Got the Nikon D3. I was down in a place called Portsmouth yesterday. Did a lovely live stream on Perry, um, which was really nice. Down there, and we managed to get explore the area. Let's just zoom in on that. Yeah, that looks nice. Nice shot there. Love this sky just down here. Moody sky this morning. Um, anyway, very eerie down there, and it's got a very similar feel this morning. If you're out and about and you can get out early with your camera in the morning in the UK, there's a lovely eerie light down here. It's odd. Don't know whether what the days are. It's meant to be really sunny today. Over just let's squeak over there. Over towards Brighton. I got a little bit of sunshine. And it's certainly looking better kind of north inland. It's looking better. It's changing though. Very changeable. I'm not sure what the forecast is. So much rain yesterday. Nightmare. I had to do a port, couple of portrait shoots uh, outside and it was good fun. <laughs> As you can imagine. Just wander down here a little bit. See what we can see. Loving the textures, loving the colours. Muted colours, hardly anyone around this morning. Lovely moody sky, really, really nice. I've got the Nikon D3 with me. I've got the old boy out with me today. Needed a bit of an airing. So I've got that with me and I've got the nice 28 to 70 mil. Uh, I've got an even wider angle lens with me. I was hoping the tide was gonna be a little bit further out, but it's not and they're doing a lot of work down here at the beach. It's a nice image here. I love the pier sign. I've used this before in images. It's a shame about here. There's a nice image looking along there. And what I'm going to try and do is frame it up nicely for you. About there. And give that loads of space to the left-hand side. I know, crazy, aren't I? But I still think it works. I like that sky. You're almost focusing on the sky. We'll try it from the other side as well if we can. So move to my left so we can keep the P in there. It's the small details that matter. I can't keep the I in there. So on the sign we've got the word pier. Keep that in there. Time that in between those waves. That little bit of a breaking wave just in there makes a little bit of a difference. Zooming right in, I'm probably in on, uh, what am I? I'm just off the 70s. So I'm about 60 mil on this now. Just there come back a little bit also works on the wide the 28 right out wide very nice like that shot bring that back a little bit just juggling around with my exposure I'm actually shooting on Aperture Priority. A lot of my work that I shoot with is Aperture Priority all the way. I've been taking pictures now for probably 30 years professionally, on and off. I'm pretty much on all the time. Um, I don't think I did any other jobs. I might have done a couple of other jobs when I was younger at the same time, but I've always been taking professional photographs, editorial photography, through to magazine kind of stuff, photojournalism, that kind of things. So. Aperture priority is just, it's just my go-to setting. I will use stuff on program mode as well. And there's a lot of photographers out there that are falling off their chairs right now. 
But the tech is there. You just need to learn how to use it. You know, right? go manual if you want to. Go manual focus if you want to. I personally use aperture priority all the way through. So images that count, and I don't like too much getting in the way. So I'm really liking this wide shot. Let me just take that off continuous focus on there. I'm just get a bead. I'm focusing splat bang right in the middle of the pier, end of the pier, and the sign just there. Aperture priority is about five, uh, 6.3 on the app there, 400 on the shutter speed, which is absolutely fine for what I'm doing now. We've got some nice moody shots. Let's keep walking down. We're going to go exploring. Just show you this other side, actually, if I can. You've never seen this pier. Get, I like piers. Oh, we've got some life. We've got some people down there. Big bulldozers working at the moment, pushing all the... Uh, all the shingle back working away so i'm glad that's not started up lovely view across down towards now you're looking towards actually portsmouth where i'm right all the way where i'm down now where i am today sorry apologies i've not had a coffee this morning tripping over my words like a madman i need that caffeine fix um south sea was just down there if you caught me on periscope yesterday all the way down there probably about an hour hour and 20 minutes drive away um, different coastline where we're not at a harbour either and we haven't got exciting forts but we have an exciting pier down here but I love the simplicity look at this shot just here lovely blue blue sky tons of blue running through there a little bit of white I'm going to take you off camera hold you up steady and we're going to go for a little walk and see what we can see put you on when i'm taking a photograph don't know where we got a little bit of rain over there just make out maybe a little bit of rain over towards brighton a bit love that look at this light you're so lucky to be out with a camera today there's something about the light first thing i'm going to put you straight back on that camera I love that shot there. There's just something about it. A lot of my photography, um, let's just drop that ISO down. I was actually shooting on 200 ISO, but it's brighter than I'm thinking, so we're going to drop that down. You want to shoot on the lowest ISO you possibly can at all times, uh, and then you can get the highest quality. Simples. So even on about 100 ISO, I'm 640th on the shutter speed, f6.3, and we're just going to pick off a couple of images here. I've just underexposed slightly by about 0.3. Might be too much on the daylight today, but I'd rather have. In the old days, let me show you. In the old days when I used to start, well, I started my career on film. It's all back in now. It's all back film, lovely, you know, back shooting films, lovely. When you first started, you used to always prefer what they used to call a meaty neg which was a, a, a thick neck, over, slightly, slightly over, um, overdeveloped so you can bring up the highlights. Trying to get my words out here. But you wanted to meet it. You want lots, lots to work with. You don't want the highlights blown out. That's what I'm trying to say to you. So a lot of the time when I'm shooting even on the digital, I will underexpose it slightly. So you can keep, the iPhone does a good job of it actually. You don't want to lose all that detail on here, okay? Lots of messages coming through. Don't know what's going on with the Guardian newspaper at the moment. We'll get rid of them. Um, we don't want to lose the detail. You see where I'm pointing all the way along that sky. And sometimes on an even on an Android phone, on a DSLR, whatever, it will try and blow out this and then keep your detail in here. So I always underexpose a little bit. And then when you're processing the image, you can always lighten it up. That tends to be how I work. So most of the time, and all cameras are slightly different, a D3 on my one and the d800 actually are normally about a 0.3 underneath under exposure so along this pier let's give you some of the history of this pier a little time if you don't know piers or you've never been on a pier like this english culture if you live by the sea salt it's a tradition that you come down to the pier look at this light down here it's lovely uh, you come down and you explore the pier Normally on a Sunday afternoon when you've had a nice big roast dinner and you come down, you go for a nice wander around the pier, stroll, walk off dinner, and I love it because you can get 
loads of different characters and people sat sunbathing and walking, got amusements down there. But one of the things they have is this kind of wall that runs all the way down, this glass wall. And it's really cleverly designed because what it will do is, if it's really windy, you can normally go one side or the other and it protects you from the wind as you're walking along. And you've got this lovely bit of artwork running all the way down here as well, this stained glass. I think a local community art group have done this, which is near, really nice. And right down the end, we've got some great photographs that I'm going to be showing you. But we're just going to concentrate on images just for a second. Actually, we're not. We're just going to look at this. Look at this. Great shot. Look like Vespers. Scooters. <laughs> like that. Hey, brilliantly, you've got the option. Excellent, buddy, I expect to see you doing it. <laughs> They're obviously pushing it out to everybody, huh? Nice to have you. How are you doing this morning, buddy? Nice to see you. We're down in Worthing. I'm risking it. Had a few technical problems right at the beginning of the broadcast. We had no audio, but we seem to have sorted that out now. The signal is a little patchy in Worthing at the best of times. But look at this light down here, buddy. Really nice light. Got some fishing boats out there. They're actually building right out on the horizon line. Let's zoom in, see how, how good the zoom is on here. Really nice here this morning, David. This is where the wind farm that they're building is. Just still out there, right on the horizon line. I think that is the platform there. I thought it was further over, actually, but I think that's about it. The data was pretty good, so Lee was just asking a question about when we tested this, I got, the, um, I got the opportunity to use this a little bit further on. Hey, look, we've got a new feature. What's this new feature? I can bring up all the text. That's interesting. How do I get rid of it? Okay. Don't know how we're going to do that. So I've just discovered a new thing on the app. I found no instructions for this app from YouTube. I even sent them a little message um, asking for some assistance. And I've just discovered that if I touch the screen, I can see all the past comments coming up. That's interesting. Okay, live and learn. Uh, right, two stories going on at once, which is pretty typical with me. First story I'm going to finish is right out here, they've got a wind farm being built, which is a really good thing that they're going to be putting out there. I think so, you know, renewable energy, which is good. So there's interesting that they're building this. And I think there's about 100 wind turbines are going to be put up along there. And you just see some fishing boats just to the right of them coming, going along the coastline doing their fishing this morning. Um, Lee, what was your question? Remind me, buddy. The data, that was it, I remember now. The data was pretty good. This is the second broadcast using this mobile app. We're going live on YouTube with it. So it'd be interesting to see. But my data, I reckon for an hour, uh, we did. A, it turned out to be about a 55 minute uh, broadcast. I reckon I used about a gig of data, which sounds a lot, but actually I think that was pretty good going, considering the image quality is a lot better than other live broadcasting. People, let's have a look at the other side just for a second. Lovely old photographs there. Well, not so old, but they look old. Wander around here a little bit. I don't know whether my signal's holding out here, but it seems to be doing good. We've got no notifications. Interestingly, the first time I did this, I had so many warnings about you haven't got enough, uh, enough of a signal and none this morning. And I know Worthing's pretty patchy, but I started up the uh, broadcast and I had no warnings apart from a bit of audio problem. Hey, look at that sea. <gasps> Man, that's worth a shot. You can almost, you can't work out where the sea ends and the sky starts. Let's just do a couple of images there. It's like a blank, really blank, eerie canvas. I think you're a little bit lower than I am when I'm looking through the camera. Oh no, you've got it, that's good. So all I'm doing now is a really wide shot. I'm focusing right on the horizon line. ISO is right down. You can see the image now that I'm taking. Very simple, clean image, but I like it. You do not often see 
those kind of colours. I've not seen it looking like that, and I've done a lot of walking around here taking pictures. There's the digger standing there, starting up. I'm glad I didn't hang around there. Two people. I've now seen three people this morning. Everybody's stuck in traffic jams on their way to work. I'm lucky. feel lucky to be down here. We'll go right down to the end and we're going to come back. We did some night photography down here. Oh, it must be a good year and a half ago now, which is quite interesting. Looking for inspiration this morning. Tell you what, we're going to get to the old photographs here and I can show you a little bit of the history of the pier when we get here. Lots of new artwork by students from the local colleges and schools, looks like it, to my left. But this is what I really wanted to show you. Hey Robert, good morning. Yeah, it is Lee. I'll show, remind me when I get to the other side and you can just about see it on the horizon. So my regular followers will know these photographs, but it'd be interesting to show all new people out there what we've got. So these are some great old photographs of the pier here. As I say, it's about 150 years old, this pier. So we've got some 1920 photographs of people roller, roller skating down there. Where I've just walked by the look of it. Actually, I think I've said this before. That could actually be along the prom rather than on the pier. It doesn't look like it's on the pier to me. Don't know why I'm thinking that, but I think it is. Can't believe the nearest wind farm is eight miles offshore. I know, it's a dot on the horizon, isn't it? It's going to be big though, you can see it from everywhere. Great shot here, 1950s photograph, image from Worthing Museum, which is in the town. Love this image. And we've stood here before trying to work out exactly the, how they've taken it. And we think, if you just scoot around here, it does look a lot nearer, especially on a clear day today. Really does look a lot better. We reckon that the photograph was probably taken from these steps here. So if we scoot down, there's the image here. You know, look, you've got a, the, the modern version of these two young ladies walking down there along the boardwalk. Let me just scoot back across here. There's the original in 1950 on a nice sunny day. And we reckon it's about there. Could be a little bit. Or he was on steps. I don't know. He, he might have been up on the... Or he or she. I'm presuming it was the male photographer. It might not have been, it could be the female photographer. Whoever they were, could have been up on this building here and then looking down, because you see the perspective down here. I want to recreate this image. <laughs> I want to recreate this image in the summertime and see whether exactly the same spot that we could do it. Wouldn't that be cool? I reckon that's a photo challenge for the summer. Great shot. The fire destroys the South Pavilion of Worthing Pier, September 1933. So this is the Southern Pavilion that we're at now. There's a photograph. Let me. Oh, the old bones are aching this morning. Let me bend down and show you. So there's a big fire at the end of it. Great photograph. Great news image there. Another one there from alongside it from 1913. There was a big storm destroyed it. And that pretty much did destroy it. Look at that. You can see the old town of Worthing behind. Just seeing whether there any old buildings still there. Look like they are, actually. Some of them are. And then there's some other ones there, but we'll save them for another day. We'll keep walking down. Pop you nice and securely on the top of the camera and we'll go... Straighten you up a bit. That's better, I think, just about. Lots of pigeons around. So they actually had paddle steamers that used to come down here. There was talk that they were going to bring them back. So this platform here is often used for fishermen to stand, make some lovely images when they're around. Surprised there's none down here this morning. And they used to have paddle steamers that used to come along here. And more up here, and you'd buy your ticket, get on the paddle steamer, and then it will take you for a nice little little journey down the coast and back again. A little day trip. Very, very popular. 
The pavilion here now has been converted into a lovely coffee shop and bar and venue, which was great. It used to be a grotty old nightclub <laughs> years ago. <laughs> it's nice to see that. So you can see the wind farm. I think David was from Storrington who was on, and he, ju he just said about how far it was out, eight miles out. Let's go right to the end of the pier. And you can see Andy's digger. So Andy, Bob the Boulder, is a, is a scoper, he's a periscoper in the area. And he did a scope from down there. Let me take you off here and hold you up a little bit so we can zoom in. So right out there, you can just make them out. Are the wind turbines that they're building. Uh, and David said they're about eight miles out. But yeah, they, look, they seem a lot closer when you're down here. And there's a guy actually that's doing tours down there. You can get on a boat out of New Haven and go for a, a trip and have a look around them. So I'm not sure what this platform was. There's a larger platform right out there. Must be something to do with it. Look at this light down here. This building is lovely. On a nice wide angle shot. I can't do it justice on the iPhone. If I scoot down here, you might just be able to do it. I haven't quite got a wide enough lens today. But almost a fisheye, you can get a beautiful shot. I'll show you. You can get either side of the decking. Really nice shot. Almost down low as well works. Might give us some pictures here. We could try down here, actually. Let's keep moving. Oh dear, up here. <laughs> During low tide, at certain times, the tidal, the tidal range is a lot different. If you don't live near the coast, you don't know about this necessarily, but tidal, tides are different. So sometimes you have extremely low tides, which are often called spring tides. Um, and when you get very, very low tide, the tide, you can see that it's actually on its, uh, it's on its way out at the moment, I believe. You can see it's just about here. The tide will actually go out to about here, and you'll see all the sand underneath this beautiful old pier. And you can go, actually, I've got something up on YouTube. I've got a video where I go underneath the pier taking photographs. Uh, and you can explore all the way under here. That's Barry the Pigeon, yeah. <laughs> it's in everywhere. He even wants to be on YouTube, buddy. And you can go exploring all the way around underneath this pier as long as you're careful. At low tide, makes some lovely pictures, really does. You can see all the ironwork underneath there. Very rusty. Some, some nice landscapey type. Just pop you there. There's a nice landscape picture over there, but what I was thinking actually was I quite like the shot here just open up the aperture a little bit it's a little bit darker down there so I'm sure you got 2.8 actually on this one I often shoot wide open it gives you a very shallow depth of field and I kind of like the effect it has I just love that colouring there just down there but I'm also going to do Crank the ISO up to about 200, and we'll go about 5.6, aperture 5.6, which will keep everything nicely in focus for us. Do a couple of images. That's a white pigeon down there. there. Does look very surreal, doesn't it? Thanks, Lee, I appreciate that. Looks nice on the back of the camera. Needs a little work on it, but it looks good. Look at these, sir. Always like a bit of life in my photographs. Just seeing whether there's a way of focusing up the image, but it doesn't seem to be giving me that option. So right over there, let's see if I can show you. Up 
apologies for zooming in because I know the image quality is going to be pants. But right out there, you can just make it out in the center of the screen, is a digger that's got stranded out there. It was doing some work. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> it was doing some work out there. Uh, to do, I believe, with the wind farm. And it got stranded. So you've got this massive digger that's stuck out there, rusting away in the sea, and they haven't managed to move it yet, which I have no idea why they haven't got around to doing it. Look at these nice images with these birds flying. They seem to be determined to uh, hang around there. We'll just see if they're going to come back, because that might give me another image. Yeah, go on, lead. Let us know. Why have you got a spanner next to your name? I don't know why he's got his name next to his name. <laughs> oh, look at the curve of that wave just long there. No, you're the only one with the spanner. We thought it was something that you've chosen, buddy. No. Hey, I know what it could be. I've just remembered. Do you remember when we were testing YouTube Live and I made you a moderator? You, David, wants one. <laughs> um, I made you a moderator. That's why you've got a spanner. We thought you would, you'd done it on purpose, or I did anyway. So the reason why you've got a spanner is when we were testing it last year, we were testing out YouTube Live via another separate app. And to enable it, I had to make a couple of people moderators. And I believe you're a moderator. So you have a quite, I, I don't know what powers that allows you to have, buddy, but you have powers. <laughs> you, can, you can do things that other people can't do. I hope that's made your day. I was just commenting, actually. Look, these nice waves, that lovely motion of that wave coming in towards the foreshore there. See if we can do something here. This cinema here is an amazing place. I'd love to take you inside. But for um, I have a shot at the end of the pier from down on the sand, looking back to the seafront during low tide. Ah, you've been down there. It's a great shot. That could be my signal, buddy, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, it is. It's a beautiful place to take photographs from, just down the end of that pier. On a, on, a sunny, uh, on a sunset as well, you can walk along the beach. Again, light, low tide seems to be a key time to be doing it. And you can walk all the way. Most days, this will be you will have a bit of sand here and walk underneath this pier. It's lovely. But yeah, that really nice shot here. I was just going to do something of the... Um, see if we can just do something with the, the shot here of the town. I'm always looking for new stock images as I'm wandering around. Um, I put some images. I push them through an agency that I syndicate my work. And... Most places have been photographed 150,000 million times before you've taken that picture. Most things have been documented pretty well. So I'm always trying to get a slightly different angle on the place. Now, I'm sure this picture's been taken, but I kind of like this image here of the pier looking back into the town. It's quite nice. I was actually zooming in and just doing a shot probably on about, uh, what are we, yeah, about a 50 mil, that was a good guess, about a 50 mil because I like the, the end of the pier, well it's not the end of the pier, it's the front of the pier, and then the dome cinema next to it. Just watch my settings here because I want this to be nice and crisp. I'm just going to pop that back on continuous focus, nice and steady, low ISO on this one because I want high, high quality. Just wrap, whack that down a little bit and I kind of like that and then you've got that just that little bit of a faint almost like a faint line going across there with the waves going through but then there is another shot as well which is often the case which is wide which is you're seeing now a wide shot and I'm just re recomposing the image so I've just moved it across I've got the dome cinema over there the dome building on the right and then it And then we've got, what's going on with my focusing this morning? It seems to be playing up a little bit. Just knock that off a little bit. Just check I've got that all locked in. Oh, there you go, we're back on. I think my camera needs to coffee this morning. Did you do that? 
And then we've got a nice wide shot here. Even nicer, we've got a little pigeon or seagull flying in there. And then a the nice wide shot there of the pier, looking back. And it's lots of what I call copy space. Fair enough, happy to be a moderator for your score. Thank you, Lee. Yeah, I didn't take it off. I presumed it was something that was um, not relevant on this one. I thought it was the other one. But anyway, there you go. Well, you moderate for me and I'll moderate for you. How about that? <laughs> the world is a happy place. So a lot of the time when I'm shooting stock, which might not uh, be relevant to you guys, Watch the time, by the way, because I've got to meet a buddy of mine in about 10 minutes' time, so I'm going to have to close this down. Seems like I can put people in time out. Oh, brilliant. There we go, you see. There, there we go, you see. So any naughty people out there, you can, you can do that for me. That's good, isn't it? Um, anyway, back to this stock photography. Okay, so if you're remembering when you're shooting stock photography to keep copy space in there. I've talked about it before, but I'll tell you about it again. Okay, if you're a designer for a magazine or a newspaper or an online or whatever, if you've ever had the challenge of putting a website together, you will realise it's nice to have copy space on there because you might want a bit, nice bit of space to run some text across an image. I know, dreadful. Photographers will be curling over and cursing me. Text over an image? Why would you ever want to do that? Well, it's a sad fact, but it does happen. Even I do it now. You do want to always, you want to put text over an image. So look, this is why I've decided to shoot this image nice and wide. It's a nice image, but you could say there's a lot of dead space in there, but it's not dead space in there. A graphic designer or a web designer will look at that and go, lovely, look, I can put a nice box in there and put some text in there. Or I've got the sky up here, excuse my finger across the screen, and I can put some nice text in there. If you did a shot, and I don't know how the way I can do it, and you cropped it like that and you sent it to the agency that was syndicating your work, you suddenly have got very limited amount of people that are gonna want an image that tightly cropped. So it's all about opening it up a little bit. They can always crop that. They're all, if they want that image, they buy it and they can crop it. But what they have great difficulty in doing is adding to an image. So you make sure there's lots of space around it. And then you're, you're a, a graphic designer or a designer's best friend because suddenly they've got something to work with. And not only that, they can also crop the image. I try and do it very crudely with my hand. So if they've got an odd shape to fill, okay, another problem that a, a designer will have is they need a square image. And it's like, well, if you've shot it and there's no way that they can crop it, it's a lot easier to do with buildings, admittedly. But if the key thing was, you know, you don't want to start cropping an image out and knocking everything out. But if you keep it wide sometimes, give them a wide option, as well as your edited shot, they can crop it and get lots of stuff out there. Get lots of use out of it. That's it. Right, I'm going to walk back now. I've just heard a little engine start up and I wondered whether there's a boat coming around, but I don't think there is. And then I've got the car pull off. What have I got today? Oh, interesting news. Let me come back. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to do this. Because that's pretty much rest enough photographs for this morning. Too many photographs before I take pictures. Cheers, Lee. Thank you very much, buddy. Excuse me. Right, i tell you what I'm going to be doing today, if anyone is interested. I've got 8.39, thank you, buddy. I've got 10 minutes to go and meet a buddy of mine for a coffee, which will be very, very nice. I haven't seen him for a while. I've then got a meeting. Um, I do some work uh, for one of my clients, and I came up with this random idea to use this old derelict, well, it's not derelict, but this old building that the business has closed down in. And it's a very prominent building. And I came up with this idea, I'm going to be out of breath now, um, came up with this idea of putting, shooting uh, photographs of the local community and then putting them up, displaying them in the building. So it makes the building look more attractive because it's, it's an old shop that has got great big windows in there um, until a new developer comes in and does something with it or a new franchise or a new store comes in and does that. So, uh, we've had the okay to go and do that. Uh, the only problem is <laughs> we've got about two weeks to do it. Um, it was just like, ah, because none of the photographs are shot, nothing. So I've got to go and try and sort that out and work out how we're going to do it and whether we can extend the deadline. But it's going to be really interesting if we can do that. 
and the windows are massive and then we've got to go and get them printed so i've got to take them print them and in between that two week period i've got three days down with the shooting some photographs with the army uh down in dorset so um yeah it, <laughs> there's, a lot, there's a lot going on so hopefully we can move that deadline but it's gonna be interesting pro projects anyway great thing for the local community as well and we're kind of do a big unveiling that's the idea as well get them some publicity and everything like that for the village so that'd be really good and then the photo shoot this evening half past five which is not that exciting but one of those jobs you need to do which is uh the mayor, I think, doing something else. Coming from a multidiscipline background perspective, I totally get the copy space thing. Thank you, Lee. Yeah, there's definitely a delay on these messages, isn't there? But I think the app is working a lot better than it was last time. I'm very impressed. Be interesting to watch this back. A, on the data and everything else. So yeah, it's a busy day for me, but a good day because I'm out taking pictures. I'll leave you with a much better view than me. Just down there towards Brighton. All being well, I'm going to be in Brighton on Sunday. Quality good here. Thank you, Robert. Good test for Worthing Pier because I've had problems down here before. So this is probably one of the worst spots to broadcast from. So it'd be interesting to watch the whole thing back. Just to give you the heads up, I was mentioning a, um, something was going to be happening on Facebook on Friday. Uh, that I'm having to delay that slightly. Okay, it's not going to be happening this Friday, so take that off your calendars if you had that on there. I'll probably do a, I'll probably do a Facebook Live on Friday and catch up with everybody, but my announcement is not happening. I'm, I'm trying to work on something, uh, and I want to get fully, fully sorted before that happens. Uh, back to Sunday. Sunday in Brighton, there's a mini run. There's a mini run, a famous London to Brighton mini run that's happening. And if the weather is good and I don't get uh, seconded to go and do any other kind of work on Sunday... I'm going to be down in, Sunday, uh, in Brighton on Sunday, which is along the coast just down there, which is a fascinating place. I love Brighton. I haven't been there for ages, and I'm missing going to Brighton. Uh, and we're going to go wandering around, seeing all the amazing minis down there. The, tr the only problem is I know nothing about cars. Full stop, nothing. So, uh, but I know how to take a picture. So uh, it could be quite interesting. So no technical questions. I will see you all again soon. Thanks for watching me on uh, YouTube Live, and I will see you uh, next time. <laughs> Have a great day. Bye from sunny, almost sunny Worthing. See you later, guys.